3 and 0 sweep on the morning wager yesterday. Yes, we've done it again and that is back to 67% over the last 16 shows. 32 and 16. I am done touting records, my sergeant. I have carried out whoa, my marching whoa, orders. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Why did you just demote me? Oh no, I forgot. you I forgot my five-star general corporal. I can't keep track of what you a commander in chief. I mean, it's amazing oh, how no. quickly you can get off to a good start and then stumble oh, like no. Barbaro, okay, and just be shot on the track. I mean, we're crying out loud. I'm a colonel, you D-nozzle. I'm sorry. I get demoted. After all, sorry. we threaded the needle yesterday. We threaded the needle yesterday. We came on this show and told the people we were going to do something crazy, and we did it. And we and we were right. Aaron Nola yes. over strikeouts, and then the Mets still win. I'm sorry. I I I would put you on the, in terms of military leadership. My Mount Rushmore is is Washington, Patton, Storm, and Norman, and you. That that is, no, and that? Omar Bradley. Omar Bradley. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I don't. I'm not going to get into the. I'm not going to get, get the, into uh, this with you. No, no, in field in, in field of dreams when he's like, you're not taking a course you ain't pretty. Remember your General Omar Bradley? Too strong of a resemblance. John Lovitz was great. That's like, John Lovitz was, he was awesome there. He was. He wanted hey, to sell. Cow grass, he, he see was. the grass. Don't eat it. <laughs> All right. From the field I'm of dreams. A little pickle, pickle and I'm on my way. That's the best way to go. Oh. Oh, boy. Well, we've already officially gone off the rails a minute into this program. Let's get back on the rails because we have four. Yes, four Major League Baseball playoff games. We're going to give you a pick on three of them today. Zeno, you are getting us started. Oh, where are you getting us started? Oh, in the last game, the San, San Diego, Diego Padres. That's we are San holding Diego. a ticket. We are, of Diago. course, rooting for San Diego throughout yes. these uh, playoffs because we bet them to win the World Series. They can advance to the LCS with another win over the Dodgers. Uh, you had a first five winner on this team last night, I know, for your clients, and it was also the best bet on the show. How do we bet game four as the Dodgers season is on the line? Yeah, um, well, before I get into this, let's just discuss one thing because, you know, I, I mentioned that I grabbed the future on the Padres to win the NL and win the World Series back in the beginning of August when, you know, I think we talked about it here on the show. And, you know, one of the good things about holding a future ticket is the is the multiple. I'm a big hedge fan. I always have been, always will be, right? I, I'd rather, there. you know, there are times I'll let it ride, but there, there are times where it's certain, I think with baseball, you know, like the volatility of it, so to speak, um, mm -hmm. makes me more, more likely to hedge. And, you know, look, if this thing gets to five games, right, I can hedge against my Padres ticket with a bet on the Dodgers game in game five. So uh, we'll continue to kind of dive into the analysis of that going forward. Uh, as we get there. But tonight, I like the Padres. And let me just say one other thing about Major League Baseball playoffs. Guys, I, I know some of these numbers, juice-wise, are going to seem out of whack. But everything is juiced heavy in the playoffs. Always has been, always will mm -hmm. be. It goes that way in every sport. You're going to pay a premium on every bet you make. Uh, that's just the reality of it. Um, they're, they're not trying to deter you from betting. They're just telling you, hey, this is, this is what it costs to bet in the postseason. So, the numbers are high here, and, and if the juice bothers you, don't do it, right? Like, just stay off of it. But Padres over three and a half runs, it's at around minus 160. Shop around, see if you can get something better. And the only reason I'm endorsing this is because I believe the Padres are the better team. I believe they're going to win, and the only way they do that is by scoring. If you look at the way the first games have gone down here, the Padres, by the way, scored all five runs in game one within the first five innings. Last night, they scored all six runs in one inning. Uh, in the game two, where they scored 10 runs, six runs came in the last two innings of the game, uh, where they scored three in the eighth and three in the ninth. But this is not a Dodgers staff that can get this lineup out right now. Everybody in this lineup is hitting from top to bottom. And I think there's a world, and my analysis came that I think there's a world where the Padres could score four and lose the game five to four. Um, I don't know if they win an under game. I just generally don't think the Padres do. I, I think they have to score a lot. If remember what we've seen from the Padres this year, you know, they they, they, they they're not good at the low scoring three, one games. It's not, it's not been their forte. This lineup has to hit for them to win, but there's a world where they can lose this game five, four. If they get to five, I'm pretty sure that they win. Uh, and, and they, and they, you know, obviously would, would uh, advance, but I just at three and a half, given what we've seen from the Dodgers starting staff, 
And their bullpen probably is a little bit of an edge, what we've seen from them throughout the year. I mean, the Dodgers bullpen comes in, I think it's top five in, in bullpen ERA, sixth in bullpen ERA, and they're top five in whip. So uh, they've been getting to the Dodgers early. I think there's a world where they get to four and still lose the game. If they get to five, I think they win. But I'm willing to kind of pay the extra juice to ensure that I get to four runs here. Uh, so let's go Padres over three and a half team total. Smash that like button if you agree with Zeno there from a game which could see plenty of scoring. I will not talk about a game where I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of scoring, and it's the first one on the board. So we it's go from the last game. <laughs> What's up? Uh, you know, you know much more about not scoring than scoring. <laughs> well, well, that's that's a different podcast for a different day. All right, let's talk about the Guardians and the Tigers, though. First playoff game in Detroit since 2014, Mark. It's been a decade since they've seen playoff baseball in the Motor City, and we are betting into a lot of variance in this game. What do I mean by that? Well, the Tigers are going with, in their own words, chaos. What does that mean? It's a bullpen game. Manager A.J. Hinch has said that 10 of his 12 pitchers will be available this afternoon. So uh, he's going to throw everything but the kitchen sink at this Guardians lineup, a Guardians lineup that has really done next to nothing since that big first inning in game one. Remember, they scored five runs. The opener did not, who was Tyler Holton, in game one. That did not work. The Guardians scored five runs in that first inning. But since then, they've only scored two runs in 17 innings. They only had three hits total in game two. On the road, the Guardians lineup all year has been weaker. I'm not expecting a lot from Cleveland at the plate tonight. Now, the good news for the guards is Cobb, Alex Cobb, okay, here's a little bit more variance, Mark. He's only started three games all year and hasn't started once since September 1st. But the Tigers, you talk about cluster luck this postseason. This is a lineup that has not scored a run in 32 of its 36 innings in four games. Almost all of their runs have come with two outs and in three innings. Obviously, Carpenter had the big three-run homer in the ninth. That was the only uh, scoring play we saw in game two. So we're going to see a lot of... Cle- I-, I think Cobb, uh, vote will take him out probably before the f- somewhere in the fourth inning. We get a great bullpen from Cleveland. They should get the job done. But the Tigers, quietly, Mark, here's why I'm not concerned about a bullpen game from them. They've had the best bullpen ERA since August 1st, 2.71. So two great bullpens here, two lineups that are just not prolific at all. I think the managers create pitcher-friendly situations throughout. I'm on the under seven in Tigers-Guardians, our first game off the board. Yeah, um, tough series to bet, really is. I I don't, you know, it's one of those things where You and I have kind of hated on the Tigers for a while now, and people will jump in our comment section and, guys, you guys keep stepping in front of the train called the Tigers. So they're not good. That's why I'm willing to step in front of them. This feels more luck than than skill. You know, uh, maybe it's A.J. Hinch. Maybe it's four guys in the lineup who I've never heard of. I mean, you know, ask me to name three Tigers. It's not not as easy as I thought it was going to be, other other than, you know, Woods, uh, Tony, and, you know, the one in the Wizard of Oz. Oh, that's a lion. Sorry. Anyway, but nonetheless, yeah, yeah there you go. Um, I'm not sure if she's a tiger, but uh, there we go. No, she, right. she, that's what she is. She's a cat. Yes. I'll tell you what. Uh, before we get to the best bet, we have uh, some yeah. breaking news on the program. A special offer. You won't believe this graphic. that we, yeah. I mean, look at that right there. That I mean, is just two guys. Right I mean, why would you not just start throwing money at the sight of that graphic uh, right there? <laughs> Uh, hey uh it is. But uh, what we, we actually want you to do with that graphic is uh, buy you buy a three-day pass from one of us. Okay, you go to our uh-huh. page, buy a three-day pass. You will get the other one of us three days hey, for free. But you're getting two you three-day passes for $69. Can you it's guys that do me simple. a favor? Just do it on my page so I can talk smack to Brian Power about how I got more sales from this than he did. So if you're going to choose any page, go to my page and just buy it there. That's the one. Yeah, that one. So this way I could be like, look how much more the people of the morning wager like me than like you. You are unlikable, Brian Power. That's your problem. I don't think that at all. I think I'm a very likable individual. <laughs> and I think, I mean, right look there, I mean, I mean, I mean, who would like that? that? I mean, 
the, the ego involved with you telling the people to go to your page just for banter purposes behind the scenes, I don't know what to say to that. But the I, bottom I line is, and now we, okay, no, let's tell the people this. I know you what you want me to say yeah. this. Well, we, we you, talked I, I, you should wait till Friday. You should wait. Yes. You, you, the best move is waiting till Friday because Mark and I combined on Saturday and Sunday last week. We're 10 and one. I went five right. and oh, he went five and one. I'm getting you back. Right Not there only that, that um, you know, BP and I will we'll, we'll converse throughout the week. Uh, uh, unfortunately for me, lucky for him. Um, but we will converse oh, throughout the week. God, we, <laughs> we have we have already sort of uh, looked at our college cards. Guys, they're vastly different, right? Like we don't well, have a lot. Of, I think we got one play that's similar. That's it. Or one play that's the same. Everything else is going to be different. So wait till Friday and you'll be able to get Saturday and Sunday with it. And you're going to get a whole bunch of value, you know, just because you're going to get four, five, six different plays across the board for you guys to choose from. So that's our best piece of advice is wait till Friday. Go to wt.buzz slash mz. Buy it there. Uh, leave BP alone. <laughs> and you'll get it. You'll get you'll get a lot of play, a lot of different plays this weekend. So a lot to choose from for you guys. Love it. What a great special offer. And again, what a great gimmick. Yes, you are taller in that graphic, which is which is not just, true. You are not tall. No, you're not no, taller than me at all. That, that I cannot say talk any smack about. I am not taller than you. You are quite You are the, much stronger the, than me. You like are much stronger yes, than I, me. Everyone knows I'm that. Built like a mini fridge with arms. That's about it. Yes. I look like I'm three months pregnant, but that's okay. Uh, let's get to our show best bets. All right. Um Mets and Phillies. The Hawk Tua girl is not three months pregnant, I don't believe. But the Mets well, are one step closer I don't think you can get to the way. LCS. Okay, a very good point. Thank you, Doctor. You want, uh, you want to that one. Yes, they're well. I think they all do. Um, <laughs> Mets and Phillies, first five under is going to be our best bet. Uh, it's four and a half. We ta- You talked about being willing to pay the juice in the postseason, Mark. I don't. I actually think Ranger Suarez is going to have a really short leash for the Phillies. I don't think he's going deep into this game. I don't know how effective he's going to be, but the first sign of trouble, they're yanking him out. Uh, Quintana, I think he can be good enough for the Mets. The scoring has all come late in this series. Yes. Uh, the the commenters of the Power Five hated when I told them to take the under on this game yesterday. Okay, and they were right. I was wrong. But for six innings, it looked like the under was hitting. Okay, and then the the dam broke at the end. So. Tell, tell the people about why they should expect a low-scoring game early in Game 4 of Mets-Phillies. I mean, to your point, uh, first five innings in Game 1 scored one run. First five innings in Game 2 scored two runs. First five innings in Game 3 scored two runs. Um, and so we're going to keep that trend rolling here. But more so, look, I, I, there are two things that play for me. One, Ranger Suarez uh, against the Mets this year has been good. Been very good. Not great, but just just really good. Owns a... 2.3 ERA. He's made three starts against him. He's two and zero with with a uh, you know a two six two batting average against, which isn't great. He's given up a lot of hits, but he's managed to not give up a lot of runs here. He's also got 13 strikeouts against the Mets. We took the Aaron Nola K prop. The Mets are going to strike out. Like that's kind of their problem. Um, but Ranger Suarez here with the season on the line for them uh, on the road this year. He was very good with a 3.40 ERA, holding opposing hitters to a 2.30 batting average. Um, he won seven of his 12 games on the road this year. So I am, I'm, I'm confident that you're going to get a good start from him. I'm also in the camp that believes that Suarez may he'll be on a short leash if he gets into trouble early. But much like Walker Bueller last night, right now the Phillies can't afford to put their bullpen out there because it hasn't been good. So they'd That's rather true. trust Ranger Suarez in this game longer if they have to. As long as the Mets don't pour it on five, six runs, then guess what? He'll get a chance to hang around through this thing. In each of his three starts against the Mets, he only gave up two runs. That's enough for me. I don't think the Mets are going to score a lot here. Why? Because the Mets have always seemed to buckle under pressure, as we've seen um, in years past. Obviously, this postseason a little bit different. But um, the Mets clinching at home puts more stress on them, puts more pressure on them to do it. Because guess what? They don't want to go back to Philly. So I think that keeps things tight early. Jose Quintana has not been bad either, uh, surprisingly. Like, none of the Mets starters have been bad, surprisingly. It's just all sort of worked out for them. Uh, he was fantastic against Milwaukee. Six innings, four hits, no runs, obviously five strikeouts. I think we duplicate that again, plus the Phillies' bats have been quiet. We get a low-scoring first five here, under four and a half. Love it. Let us know what you think of that down in the comments section below, and let us know your 
favorite Major League Baseball bets for Wednesday. Again, a full four-game mm. slate. The NL Series, both could be over after tonight. We shall see. Uh, smash that like button if you already haven't done that. I mean, we've already given you a lot. There's another. I mean, that picture alone should have all of you uh, giving uh, the old thumbs up or at least sticking up one finger. I don't know. That's up to you. But we do appreciate your support here on The Morning Wager. And make sure you are subscribed to the Wage Talk YouTube channel. Click that bell for instant alerts when all of your and you'll be notified when all of your favorite shows drop, like this one. And this no, is no, everyone's no, favorite show. Get the other show. Just watch this. I mean, they don't have to get the other. I don't yeah, know. That's true. The other shows are not aware of this lobby parlay. So, no, they're also not aware of Patty Johnson. I mean, we have a soul chilling around the show. It's not me. So, I learned that a colonel outranks a sergeant today. I mean, I, I really don't want to see that face. I mean, that, that that's a pin cushion of massive proportions. That one I'll take. <laughs> Doesn't get her pregnant, though. He has. <laughs> She's not pregnant. Okay. Definitely not pregnant. Everybody see it.